Hi, this is Annika Lidner with Swedish Startup Session and I'm sitting here with Lisley for this week's episode. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas the way to heart. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim use a G. Please believe. This is Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bitch, you'll be thanking God. This is Sweden. I'm flying to all. You ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas. You ain't hard. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim use a G. Please believe. This ain't Sweden Witness a massacre In Middle East to Africa It should be thanking God This This is the Swedish Startup Sessions Startupjob.se It's a spanking brand new service that we built during 24 hour business camp this past week in Stockholm. It's a matchmaking service between startups who are looking for people to join them and people who are looking to join startup either as co-founders or as employees. And three hours into this 24 hour business camp, we started to get customers and we have a host of brilliant Swedish startups that have joined us. Uh, and if you are looking to, for a job at one of these startups or if you want to add your startups to startupjob.se, just go to, yeah, you guessed right, startupjob with two B's.se. Uh, I'm Annika Lidner, we're back here with Lisley and Therese uh, and Simon. And you are both quite well known uh, internet profiles in Sweden. Uh, you have worked, Therese, you have worked a lot with marketing, PR, and you are the search engine guru, or one of the top search engine people in Sweden, right? Pretty much. Uh, yeah. And you have a startup together, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so tell me about it. What is Lisley? Um, this is basically a social media monitoring tool uh, which focuses on the Nordic market in Europe. Uh, so we started in focusing on Sweden and now we're focusing on other countries in the northern region of Europe. Yeah. And uh, what's really disruptive about this idea that you have a lot of competition with Radian 6 and others? Maybe it's um, it's, a, it's a combination between measuring absolute numbers and data and also combining that with a more updated um, idea of the relative numbers of in, in relations to the world around you okay. and making it a bit more adjusted to our world today. Yeah. And also, I would say, uh, the pricing is um, a lot more for the people. So. Our tagline is social media metrics or social media analytics for, for the people. So it's it's priced in a way that um, almost anyone in any company should be able to buy um, a part of this yeah. to uh, to help them through their issues. There's many many few things. This uh, one that we should talk about for the local focus. Um, we are focusing on local markets. Every single market in Europe, for instance, Sweden, Norway, Netherlands, or Germany, have their own social media types, have their own blogs, stuff like that. And if you want to measure those kind of stuff, you need a good tool for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we're focusing on local markets with quality data, and as well as. Uh, a tool should be as easy to use as Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. It should be that easy and shouldn't. It should be available for much more people than just the uh, international corporations with yeah. shitloads of money. Yeah. And also we have a, a language situation which I don't think the, the American competitors addresses, right? Yeah. No, not really. And I mean, as Simon said, the, the, the sources that we actually monitor are really specific for each country. So we don't move on to the next until we've covered a whole country. So for us it's just skimming the top of the uh, social media platforms that um, are operating in one country is not going to be enough mm -hmm. to give a company the basis for uh, a good analysis. Mm -hmm. So that combined with the, the language barriers is one of the things that we're looking at. But it's also you got to specify on how you, for instance, if you search for monitor Twitter, for example, yeah. or Facebook, you got to have good tools for getting 
which tweets are in Swedish, right. which yeah. are in Norwegian, which are that kind of stuff. Because Twitter's not good at it yourself, trust me. Uh, so you gotta build tools by yourself to know the local languages. Same principle if you look at, for instance, global search and it's yeah. Google. It's not the best search in Russia, it's yeah. Yandex. In Korea, it's Naver. So you will always have, you gotta know the local markets and be good at the local language as well to be a good tool when it comes to measurement. You have several uh, Nordic competitors. There's Silverback, you have uh, Melkwater Bus, for yeah. instance, um, probably some other I don't remember, recall right, right now. So, what, what do, how, how does Listly differ from those competitors? Uh, well, there's uh, pricing foremost, yeah. Yeah. but also. The majority of the which our content competitors are international. They're based in well, whole Europe or international, for instance, like Radiant 6, for yeah. example. Uh, so there's not many local uh, competitors, but we're focusing on these news. But you can also get the quality data. So you can use Listly to get the quality data, but a normal marketer can just use it. Ah, this looks nice, this is good for me. So. That's one thing that we're very good at as well, is the quality data. Uh, if you don't have the quality data for a tool, you won't uh, succeed. And how many, how, how big is your team right now? How many are we? Uh, we're currently eight people affiliated with this thing. Are you bootstrapping or are you working full time? Or you get people the majority of the people are working full time. Yeah, yeah absolute majority. Uh, we are also a company which are. Uh, Developers own a large percentage of the company. Okay, they have been yeah. so we have about uh, they own the company and are much as part as an interest in the yeah. company. So I work directly with Johnny at our company, yeah. which is chief developer of uh, Listly, mm -hmm. and he owns Listly as well. Yeah. So we don't go to buy development. No. They are a core part of our. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, and also as um, someone mentioned with the cloud discussion, if, if cloud is beta and I think Listly, in some ways, is also going to be perpetual beta because we always strive to develop in relation to our clients' needs. Mm. And so in that sense, I think we're really credible because we provide truly um, good data and broad data and with depth, yeah. but also we're flexible and speedy enough to develop new features and new functionality for our clients as, as a smaller startup world. So that, I think, that's something I'm really proud of. And when, when, really when, uh, when did you start? Uh, Last year. 2009, fall of 2009. Uh, the ID came yeah. with the yeah. and, and we ID. launched Alpha last summer and Beta last fall. Yeah. yeah. So we acted the development for the tool mm -hmm. started last year. Yeah. And how are you founded? Bootstrap or do you have investors? Or? It's organic. We've we've invested our time, which yeah. is a lot of money, but um, no external financial. Uh, we invest invest ourselves and our yeah. own money. Into have it. you got an office or? Yeah. You're, yeah. Still got you're, that. In, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're We're capital. actually um, renting We're another, expanding a yeah. new uh, place as well. So. We are expanding pretty fast, so yeah. just this two months we employed two more people. We're going to employ more people right now, so we're expanding So fast. you're profitable already? Yeah, or profitable. Even. Yes. But, but a startup can never be, uh, if you look at from the time you're spending into it, it's an investment. Yeah. You cannot see that's perfectly profitable. But you at, at least break even yes. to afford salaries and yeah. office spaces. Uh, but I would also say that um, to be profitable for us, it's it's, um, we've taken pride in being able to grow um, this big organically with our own funding and with time spent. And now we've reached, I would say, a, a, a crit critical point where we need to look at expanding into other countries and mm -hmm. maybe looking at external financial financiers. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a breaking point for us, but yeah. as long as we can withstand and develop in a pace and a rate that we don't lose momentum. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be good, but there is always that breaking point where you need yeah. to expand faster than you would normally, and you need to buy services also. So yeah. I think we're getting closer and closer to that point where we need to 
increase everything really fast, but we've come a really long way. Me meaning that if you, anyone who watches, who feels that today really need to offer the, uh, or get a good investment, they should contact you, right? Yes. You yeah. can always contact us, it's, it's always a pleasure. So. But uh, every single money we get is going to developing our yeah. job further. So yeah. we are not planning on putting up a gigantic sales office with 45 people. It's we got to grow our product, yeah. grow yeah. our tool, and grow fast. Yeah, it's an organic process. But but Europe is your your uh, main uh, focus right yeah. now. Right yes. now we're we're focusing on Scandinavia, mm -hmm. and then we're also going to go in North Europe um, and northern countries mm -hmm. as well. Um, we are not focusing on being the absolutely Excellent. global in <laughs> English. Uh, mm -hmm. There's already a ship of tools yeah. that we are trying to be the best there. You, you, you uh, mentioned uh, Russia. How, yeah. Do they have any metrics companies like Leslie at all? Well, in Eastern Europe they have some, yeah. um, some monitoring tools. There are monitoring mm -hmm. tools because yeah. people are social in Russia yeah. and Eastern Europe as yeah. much as we are here. Yeah. Uh, so it's just completely different from yeah. the way we measure and the, the languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also it's from every single country. When we talk about social media, we tend to always talk about Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Um, that's good that we talk about those kind of tools, but you've got a broader perspective as well. There are a lot of local blogs oh, yeah. and also local forums. Yeah. People forget forums. Uh, for some and, customers... And well. also local... Um, Networks like uh, in Russia. Yeah, of course. If you look at, for instance, some of our customers who are working with and monitoring tool are quite surprised. They have more mentions from local forums than they have on Facebook and Twitter and combined. More relevant, yeah. much more relevant uh, mentions. Yeah. Because forums are, there people gather there because of their interest. I'm interested in cameras. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in cars mm -hmm. or stuff like that. So, for many customers, those kind of really important. These forms are mainly local, yeah. very local in the local language. So for every single country, you will always have the different forums, the different social networks, social medias. So if we go, if we one day go into Russia, yeah. we gotta be the best in Russia yeah. and get all on sense. Yes. We don't want to do anything halfway. Mm. We want to do be the best. Nice. Do you have any? What have you learned during this process of, of the startup? And, and do you have any advice to uh, other entrepreneurs who are perhaps starting out? I think for me personally, because I've had startups before, um, is focus and to have focus on one or a couple of things and do them really well, uh, which is a lesson for me personally, but also for Lisley because we've focused on really being really good at one thing and then moving on and re being really good at that thing. So um, the lesson you get or the, the, the result you get from actually giving something really a lot of focus is a big lesson. And I think with, with, when it comes to Listly is always being agile, always being able to uh, adjust to what our clients think and we get a lot of feedback from from people like you and from friends and our network and clients, which is amazing. I mean, it's it's the way we do business development. Is of course we, me and Simon, we can sit in a room with a bag and box of wine and think, huh, I wonder how the future of digital is going to look. But then we need to supply our customers with help yeah. for their acute problems today and tomorrow. So we're it's um. It's a crowdsourced adventure. <laughs> me, mainly, I will say, uh, never be satisfied. Yeah. Never be satisfied. I think that oh, now we're so good. You always have to move forward, 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 because this world is moving so fast yeah. and it's changing. And we have to focus all the time to move fast all the time, and also don't underestimate the time. Yeah, exactly. Always have more time okay. and think about if you're. I think that one lesson that you got to learn is that you can't just do a startup. Oh, I'm just going to do it as a little nice project. Yeah. You got to focus on it and do it correctly because it will take a lot more time to think. Yeah. Um, so. And from our, I just have to add one thing that for me was a big bit of a shock is that the the idea for Lisley came out of mine and Simon's own need for a tool like this. So. From the beginning, we have a lot of knowledge and 
insight into how to analyze data mm. but then we have clients it's a wonderful tool and you can get tons of data out of it but if you don't know how to analyze it and uh, what what types of insights you can draw from that data it's worthless yeah so it also uh, it can be a difficult thing for a client to buy if they don't know how to use it. it and then it just gives them anxiety attacks I have all this <laughs> and I don't know what to do with it yeah. so educating the clients and being better and making better decisions and using it before, under and after. I mean that for us the educational part of our tool yeah. has also I think been a lesson to not just think that it talks about itself. It doesn't. Uh, many of your clients are quite big corporations and, and what general kind of advice do you have for them that uh, comes out of the startup process? Any? You mean uh, advice for the corporations yeah, or big corporations. going into this? Yeah. Um, trying things out. Mm -hmm. I think as we heard in the previous discussion, just trying new things, trying new technology mm -hmm. and seeing what... I mean, it's one, one new function, one new service doesn't necessarily have to serve a purpose for everyone. If you can find a purpose for your company and that gives you insights and tells you something mm -hmm. about your clients and makes you more knowledgeable or gives you a better confidence whatever then that's good for mm -hmm. you so being curious and trying things out listening to people you, th you think that, that a lot of big corporations and, and government agencies are then in, in this mindset that they had to do this you know big uh, purchase process which which we did with the old systems and they have the same mindset that instead of you know oh I try this your company for a month and then they have to try your competitor and I can compare yeah, yes, I, uh, instead they, they, they get in, into this you know huge decision process uh, instead I, of I've trying been, things out. I've seen companies spending more time on the buying process than using the tools they're buying afterwards. <laughs> it's, it's basically true but uh, and more money. Yeah. yeah because you spend a shitload of time with a study because which tool should be used and then you don't, you don't use the tool. Yeah. The main thing is that, as with all the tools when it comes to internet and uh, measurement, use the tool and use the data from it. Yeah. Try it out, test it, you can test it in a month, you can test it uh, for three months, stuff like that. Try it and also use the data. It's like having Google Analytics but not using the data when improving your site. Of course, then Google Analytics is worthless. Yeah. yeah, because then it's just a tool. Mm. And with tools you get fancy graph. Mm. And you, you can put it on a um, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. <laughs> and you can look good to your executives. But will it improve your company? Will it improve your business? Mm. Will it make you earn more money? And the best way to use Listly and other social media monitoring is to analyze the data, get the information right out of it and by that earn more money. And also I would say um, from my point of view as a consultant when you work with companies that tend to they want to know more about their clients or what's going on in digital but then when they have that type of knowledge they don't realize that they need to reorganize yeah. internally they use the same structures internally in the marketing department and the purchase department and the digital department and the online and it's the same structure but the the world around them has changed so they need to sometimes look into okay this is what the world around us looks like and to optimize our process from business development or product development or sales or crisis management whatever it takes also change internally so yeah. to adjust um, which can be difficult. I mean, who is supposed to be working with Listly? Is it the marketing department? Is it sales? Is it customer, customer support? Is it crisis? Oh, yeah. I mean, PR. Or the CEO. Or the CEO, exactly. So, it's um, that's a lesson for mm -hmm. us to, to teach them and to talk about mm -hmm. this is the way you can use it and also be able to, okay, we, we might have to make some adjustments yeah. to be open. Uh, what do you think about the, the, the startup scene in Sweden? In general, um, I think it's really good. Yeah, I think it's become better and better. I I used to work for a big entrepreneur a couple <laughs> of years back, and then he always talked about um, the Swedish startup scene being so poor. Yeah, and I was really I, I mean I was 25 then, and 
from my point of view now, I think it's quite blooming. I think also internationally we have, you know, companies in America and in Berlin and and other companies where Swedish startups are making huge successes. Mm -hmm. Look at Spotify, look at Skype and other companies that are actually taking the world, not mm -hmm. only Sweden by storm. So I don't know if it's um it's a or it's a mindset change or if it's we've just broken out of our shell. I don't know. I, f I think it's blooming. I feel really positive about it. I would say that it's not currently, if you compare it with other places, yeah. if you compare it with the area, for instance, it's, it's obviously you, you cannot compare it. No. Of but course. we are only 9 million people in that Yeah, but well. even it's a. But, but the entrepreneurship and the startup scene in Sweden has not historically been good. Yeah. Not at all, because if you, for instance, if you look at the uh, largest companies in Sweden in the last 40 years, there have not been any new. Gigantic large companies. I think H and M were like the really last yeah. one. Um, so we don't have that kind of uh, companies, but it's starting to be better uh, within the internet scene, the startup scene, and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's, it's a positive also, future. It's also what you measure from successful. It could be a huge, you know, industry company yeah. where it could production of uh, bullets or something like that. But it could also be, I mean. A company with 50 or 100 or 200 employees who strive to develop something or to bring the development forward or to cha change the view on something. Mm -hmm. So it can be maybe that company doesn't stick in history and live a hundred years, but it changes something. So yeah. and its success doesn't necessarily have to be making shitloads of money and employing people all over the world. It could be, but then also changing something and making an influence or bringing something forward could be a special thing that we could do. Thank you very much, Tillis and Simon. Thank you.